Welcome back to the Be Strong Show. I am your host, Michelle Shirley, CEO and Chief Heart Officer for Be Strong International. I am so happy that you have tuned in today. Where have you been? We missed you. We missed being uh, a part of this with community newspapers. It's been a while. And so now we're back in full effect with some amazing guests today. I do want to give you a brief update. We had had over the summer an amazing back to school event where we gave over 2000 book bags out to the community. And so we're here today to talk a little bit more about how that effort went about, came about, um, all of the exciting things that happened during our back to school event. So we have two amazing guests with us today. We have William C. Diaz Rosalo, Chair of Leadership Miami and General Counselor of Morgado Automotive Group. Welcome to the show. Good morning, Michelle. <laughs> And we also have Ozzy Martinez, member of Maximize Miami, right? Leadership Miami alum, vice president, market manager at Grove Bank and Trust. Thank you for being here. Thank you for having me. Awesome. So let's get into it. Tell me, William, about Leadership Miami. The audience probably would love to know. I know that there are nonprofit leaders that watch our show and so would love for them to know about Leadership Miami, how that program works and a little bit about how nonprofits could get involved. Sure. Thank you, Michelle. And thanks for having me. I'm a proud representative of the program. Uh, it's now 46 years strong. Wow. Uh, for 44 of those years, it was a one year program, almost mm. one year that began, ran from October to June. Uh, in the last uh, two and a half years, it's changed to a two cohort program that runs uh, consecutively beginning in August and then also in February and running for about 100 days. Ozzy participated in LM45 Spring. Spring. Um, nice. That was my, my second, my vice chair uh, year. Nice. Uh, and the idea is that we uh, request our impact uh, partners, our nonprofits in the community uh, to submit proposals that can be executed within 100 days. Hmm. Uh, to, we asked for not fundraising projects, pure fundraising right. projects, but ways that we can impact uh, the nonprofit from a programming or from a capacity standpoint. Nice. And then we have them present to our uh, cohorts that range around the 50 uh, participant uh, range uh, in a fair. And uh, it's a way for them to not only get selected uh, for partnership with one of these uh, one, typically one to four, one to five, uh, four to five teams. Uh, but it's a way to present now to a host of new potential donors, young, right. um, uh, young board members. So nice. even if you're not selected, you're now that's now a seed planted in the mind mm. of the up and coming leadership class. Uh, in uh, the Miami-Dade County community. And if they're selected, uh, then uh, the teams will uh, partner with them to execute a community project. Right. The way we have always looked at it is uh, through the execution of a, co a community project, it's an experiential uh, learning uh, and it really uh, invest you in not only a segment that you may not have been uh, mm. uh, aware of or, or a problem that you may not have been aware of, but now you're a problem solver. Right. Uh, and now you've truly become uh, interwoven into this really complex tapestry that is mm. Miami. Uh, so That's I'm beautiful. this year's chair, and I'm and I stand on the shoulders of incredible chairs before me, from the ones who, um, my chair was Felipe Basuto at TD Ooh, Bank, which I love. Yes, Hi, I'm not going to say anything about TD Bank <laughs> other than it's a wonderful bank. Right, right, right. But shout out to First American Bank. My father is the uh, one of the executives there, um, and to Keith Fletch Fletcher, who is now with mm. uh, Boys and Girls Club, and to my nice. predecessor Brandon Mitchell. I, I'm really blessed to have learned from so many mm. great ones and. Now the uh, the reins are mine, and I'm hoping I'm I'm doing well with it. Well, you did absolutely well because we were so proud of the group that we had, which is where why Ozzy is here with Maximize Miami. Before I speak to you, Ozzy, I want to ask you a little bit more about what makes or what what criteria does a project need to be selected? Because I'm sure that there are nonprofits that submit all sorts of things. So apart from the fundraising, which you've made us aware of. What are some examples of project projects that you've seen that have been selected or that they can know that they need to align themselves in such a way? That's a great question. It's a it's a question that we 
confront every, and mm-hmm. it's an opportunity for us for every cohort. Um, we want to make sure, one, it's not fundraise, peer fundraising. Right. We want to make sure that our participants are actually getting involved with, if possible, because there are certain projects that we've had in the past where the community is so sensitive, actual interaction and engagement is a, is a difficult hill to climb, mm-hmm. but that doesn't keep away from impact. So we want to make sure, for example, that they're the participants are actually taking part of creation, whether it's programming, whether it's capacity building. So oftentimes we'll see a room that needs to be built out so that you can increase uh, or add new programming or increase your ability to serve a certain segment of the community. Mm, Okay, that's Um, good. uh, With Ozzy's team, it was adding an additional layer to uh, the backpack program for Mm -hmm. Be Strong. So now the outreach is growing bigger and the locker room which was a really nice touch Mm, that's the aspect of creation that intrigued us as well um and so it has to be executed within 100 days it has to be sustainable so in other words the way we look at it is we're going to hand you the keys to this new program it's going to continue beyond that and when you do that you now start talking about a team's legacy which is not a word that i really wrapped my head around until i went through the program nice. in ye old days right. um so 14 years ago so mm. those are sustainability uh executable within 100 days uh, the sweat equity however that looks mm-hmm. uh, and engagement within the community that you're serving right because some of the the nonprofits that i saw had more of um, like you said the building the painting um, i've seen other groups redo like a teacher's lounge um, gardening projects. So really, I love that hands-on effect where they all get to dig in and really be a part of what's going on, the I mission. Will, I, and yes, yeah, so, and there has been a lot of uh, elbow elbow deep into the in, into construction, you know, uh, but we, we go, we like to, we've seen more than that. Mm-hmm. Programming is a big part and it's intriguing to us, especially in this model. Right. Uh, program creation is one. Um, Bully 305, which was a few years back, was mm-hmm. a campaign that started through leaders through a leadership Miami mm-hmm. team. So it, it's not necessarily putting up stucco and drywall. Mm-hmm. You can actually help impact uh, communities by creating fairs, by creating um, events that will go on and attract more. Nice. Very nice. I love that. So, Ozzy, you're up, right? I want you yes. to talk a little bit about, like, what made you want to be a part of Leadership Miami? Did your boss say, hey, this is something you need to do? Yeah. How, what was that buzz like, and, and why did you join? So, for me, uh, my boss was the one who actually recommended <laughs> okay, it. So I knew However, it. <laughs> However, I would say that for me, uh, I was born and raised here in Miami, right? And uh, we have a, a a need to to help and to mm-hmm. and, and to really impact families uh, here in Miami and to give back to the community. So for me, that aspect was the main reason why I decided to join. And on top of that, it's a great leadership program, right? So you, you get together with like-minded folks. Um, you you have a goal. You work with a nonprofit, right? And it, it's just a, a great experience. Uh, so, someone who hasn't done it before, who hasn't involved, hasn't been involved in the nonprofit world, I definitely uh, would recommend for you to dabble and uh, really see what it's about. You know, we, uh, our our communities are very lucky to have uh, nonprofits like Be Strong International that give back to communities like South Dade, you know, Miami, and and, and all that. So. For me, it was a, a great experience. Uh, it really opened my eyes to, mm-hmm. to the need that we have to to help our communities. And, and you know, with Be Strong, it was the giving the backpack, right? Having yeah. the backpacks, providing over a thousand book bags with high quality supplies to the children mm-hmm. of South Dade, right? Right. Because in order to be successful, you need to be prepared. And for us, that was, uh, you know, we really, that really resonated with us. Mm-hmm. So uh, so that's how I, I kind of decided to join. Uh, and, and I'm happy I did. Yes, and we are too. You you guys went all out. We were amazed at what you all presented. Um, even at the fair, it was just amazing to see all of the momentum around us. It made us feel yeah. so special to know that these were individuals that truly cared and wanted to lend a hand to the mission. Um, I want to ask you, though, about the lift that it took. Like, you still had your day-to-day job responsibilities. Absolutely. You know, you have your at-home personal life. You're working with 20 or 30 other, you know, individuals that may not always be like-minded, right? Different personalities. How did that work for you to, you know, make this event successful? 
Yeah, well, for me, it was a little bit more challenging <laughs> just because, uh, you know, during the opening conference, uh, I got a call from my wife saying, hey, we're having a baby. Oh. Uh, so it was uh, oh, a very wow. hectic time for Congrats. me, but it was, yes, thank you. Uh, she's six so months cool. now, though. Like I was telling Will, the 100 days goes by very fast, right? So, nice. uh, so it was, you know, that was definitely one of the challenges, uh, you know, because you're, you're so preoccupied with yeah. your day to day. Right. Uh, but it was very important for us. We, you know, as a team, uh, my, my team, first, I got to say, my team was great. Uh, yeah. You know, we we all stepped up to the plate. Um, we we played on everyone's strengths, and you know, everyone contributed and, and carried their weight. So, I was very blessed to have you know a great great team, right? Um, and for for the most part, you know, we 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 had over a thousand hours dedicated to uh, not just fundraising, but you know, meeting and planning, and you know, how can mm -hmm. we impact Be Strong International, and how can we you know, keep the legacy going, right? Right. And for us, that was that was the goal. So yeah. even though we had obstacles along the way, the, the mission was clear, right? right? We had a goal, and we were gonna get it, and luckily, you know, our goal was to raise over $15,000 to, to fund over a thousand book bags. Well, we doubled that. We did about $31,000 yeah. in fundraising, which was great. It was a great experience. Uh, and it got me out of my comfort zone. I'm not going to lie. Uh, <laughs> right? I had never been the in the... The pressure to ask for money. <laughs> yeah. So, <laughs> yeah. Uh, it was new to me. Um, and I was telling Will a little bit earlier, I, at first I was very hesitant. And I would apologize mm. when I was asking for, <laughs> for funds. But I had a friend of mine uh, who told me, you know, what are you apologizing for? You're wow. doing something great. And for me, that kind of turn the switch wow. and uh at that point i just i just started asking and asking and asking i think my team did the same thing and you know we were able to to balance our work life and and you know surpass our goal so it was very fulfilling that's so great and your boss i'm sure worked with you when it came to like things you needed to do meetings you need to have Abs absolutely. during that 100 days to adjust your schedule to all of the absolutely. tactics and strategy meetings that you had to have right yeah i'm, I'm very blessed to be working with grow bank and trust um nice. not just my boss but you know the the whole institution really yeah. uh stepped up to the plate and you know they they donated they they attended events mm. you know they they supported me throughout the process and so you know nice. gave me some advice so you know I'm, I'm very fortunate in that aspect and you know it, it definitely helped me with my career um, uh, the leadership aspect of the program is mm. is just so amazing it you really you really learn how to work with with different people and right. you know work to their strengths and sometimes part of being a leader is taking a step back and letting mm -hmm. some other people take the role right, right. so uh, you know it was definitely some learning experiences there that that I'll take with me from my professional career. That's awesome. That's awesome. And congratulations on on your baby Thank coming you. soon. Yeah. When's the due date? No, she was born. She was. Oh, she was born. She was already. born during my oh, during okay, my opening okay, conference. Okay. Right? Oh, so, okay. So, okay. Yeah. Nice. Very uh, nice. Oh, I missed that part. That's awesome. <laughs> so I was going to ask you, William, how do you balance being the chair? Because that's a big role. There's so many uh, participants in the program. The organizing of all of these. Uh, uh, activities, making sure that all of these high end professional leaders get what they need out of the program. How do you manage that with your big job? <laughs> I don't. <laughs> I, I say that half serious. So first of all, um, I, I go back to my op my time, my, op my actual opening conference, and I'm going to forget this, the speaker, but someone, this person said it's uh, balance is a fallacy, it's juggling. Right. Uh, and the reason I say I don't is that this is not about me or I. Mm. I have a spectacular vice chair in Julissa Rivera uh, from the foundation. Oh, I mean, she's great. We love I her. call we love her Brandon, too. who was my chair, Brandon Mitchell um, from Future Caucus. And I call him every day. I'm like, I'm really sorry. He's like, why are you sorry? Because I was a terrible vice chair <laughs> compared to, <laughs> compared what, to what I have. <laughs> and my uh, executive planning committee, which is 29 strong, I that's a, one of the things I did was increase the ranks because when mm. you have two cohort, uh, yeah, two 200 days, there's going to be some attrition. Yeah. So you want to uh, just not only have more people, but you want to have more talented, compassionate people. So to answer your question, I don't between Stephanie mm. Para uh, uh, and between Stephanie and Tanya at the chamber uh, and this incredibly talented EPC creative, uh, in, a searchful. Uh, uh, that's how we do it. 
That's awesome. have a great, we have a great team. We're a great team together. That's awesome. So how then would, um, I guess the for-profit entities get involved. How do they find out about this, especially if they may not be necessarily a member of the chamber? Does that affect them wanting to have their team members like Ozzy be a part of this in any way? Is there a cost? Talk a little bit more about that process. Uh, so there, you don't have to be a member of the chamber to okay. be a part of the program. Okay. It, does, it does help from an exposure standpoint. Okay. Um, you, We run applications. Uh, I believe it starts in May for the the fall cohort, uh, and it'll, applications will start going out uh, in October for mm. the spring. Okay. Fall happens in August. Uh, spring is uh, spring uh, starts in February. Okay. Uh, the cost depends. So we have a price for nonprofits, and you can reach out to Stephanie Para for the okay. cost. But it's it's slightly south of three thousand. Okay. Uh, and then there's a, a more reduced cost for nonprofits and okay. entrepreneurs. And through the South Florida Progress Foundation, the chamber administers the program, but the the program really is uh, belongs to the South Florida Progress Foundation. Oh, okay. Wow. Uh, we also have scholarships that will. They're not full ride scholarships, but right. they're fifty percent. And scholarship so we can help in that respect there's oh, we nice. we take uh applications for those uh, scholarships and we make determinations based on those that's awesome so i'm assuming you're getting professionals from every direction every sort of business that there is correct we do we get it we get a nice variety we get a lot of bankers a lot of attorneys <laughs> um but we we also get a lot of entrepreneurs a lot of self-starters oh, nice. a lot of uh non-profit uh, mm. uh companies as well do submit i will say the one difference that I've seen, the one, what we're starting to see a, a sea change in is perhaps because we've shrunk, artificially shrunk the classes to right, 50. Right. I like, uh, Ozzy was voluntold. And if you go mm. into, uh, so shout out to Alfredo Gonzalez, uh, <laughs> back in the day at, a, at Adorno and Yas. Um, if you go, if you were go back a few years and say, how many of you were, were voluntold, you'd get better than 60 to 70% raise their hand. In this cohort, I would say less than 20% raise wow, their hand. So you're wow. starting to see people who are actually seeking it out or companies mm. who are actually seeking it out. That's really good. That's yeah. really good to know. Wow, wow. Um, I guess the other question would be when it comes to the actual courses that you all are offering, because he's saying that he learned, you know, amazing leadership skills. Do you have professionals that are coming in and teaching just about leadership and strategic planning? Like what happens do, when they're not with the nonprofit working on some of the details of the activity? I'm so glad you asked that question. So we have three sessions, three to four sessions in a cohort, depending on how the months fall and the holidays mm -hmm. fall. Uh, those are uh, almost eight hour days. And we have uh, either we have subject matter experts come in to discuss certain topics uh, impacting Miami. We, through okay. the chamber and their committees, we can identify the issues that are really um, uh, the opportunities that lie in Miami, uh, both from a socioeconomic standpoint to a business standpoint. Gotcha. Uh, so, and on top of that, uh, thanks to the efforts of uh, our, our president uh, or the chamber president Alfred, uh, and then our prior chairs Ashaki and uh, Ashaki mm. and Jen, we uh, created a university partnership. So we reached out to our local universities from nice. FIU nice. Uh, to St. Thomas University. I'm going to try to name them all and film this. You're <laughs> Thomas University, Barry, Miami Dade Col Miami Dade College, uh, Nova, and uh, and uh, Florida Memorial, mm -hmm. and we developed programming through their own leadership institutions or Very leadership nice. programs to come in and help. So, for example, uh, Ozzy's class, we have something called Project Pitch Night. So the idea mm. is that uh, each uh, each team gets five minutes to present to a board of judges to give an elevator pitch for their their um. Uh, for their project to get some seed funding right. for their project. Very nice. Kind partnered... of like a Shark Tank. Ex I don't. I can't say that. Okay, okay. The, um, it, it's a wholly original okay, okay, inspired. Okay, okay. Uh, <laughs> I won't say it. I won't say it. I'll take that back. Okay. Um, and we invited Don Donaldson from the University of Miami to prep mm. them, uh, both from a public speaking standpoint, because many of them don't have the benefit of a law a degree yeah. and a law, uh, law education. To be able to make their case, exactly. right? Exactly. And then he came, and then Sadly, he was ill for a couple of days. I think he had pneumonia, and then they had to rely on me to come Aww. in for yeah. 30 minutes the next day. And we ran all five, uh, uh, all, I think it was four or five four. teams, four teams, wow. 30 minutes back to back, starting at 6.30 to whenever it took to run them through it. And we had a really good outcome, not because of me, but Don Donaldson, that that 
ad- additional curriculum has really helped that's them out. Awesome. And it's one of the many ways we try to educate them. That's, as so, well. that's so nice. Yeah. That's that's I, I almost see that the price that they're paying, the ROI is so much bigger that that small investment just really changes like it did your perspective on Miami your the way you think about asking for money now you have skills to pitch now you have skills to work in teams right, right. with people of all different personalities i mean if you were to pay individually for a consultant or a mentor or a coach right it would be so much more so yeah. that's so amazing what you what you all are offering at at, at the chamber i want to ask you really quickly like tell me a little bit about pitch night were you the one were you part of that yes I how was, I what, was, what was bubbling up inside of you, you how know, did that kind of the same feel? feelings before i got into <laughs> to this show today but right? uh for but I, like you mentioned don uh gave such a uh, great advice at, at our um, at our event and uh, we were able to present to him right yeah. so he gave us some ideas he sat with us and he kind right. of coached us on on how we can approach the mm-hmm. pitch right um, and it was a great experience right we we came together as a team we created a committee for pitch night uh, we ran you know different we, we spoke about just everything that we can to to really make the pitch uh, right. to make the pitch good and right. uh you know i had two other uh of my teammates with me up there that really they stole the show wow. uh, i mean they were just amazing right uh, nice so uh it, it was great it was a great experience uh mm-hmm. it, it got us you know some funding which was great yeah, and yeah. uh it was a great experience yeah and you leveled up right yeah their was presentation was and ironically you won some but they weren't the one the, the team right, right. who took it, Absolutely. but their their presentation, I got having seen it from prep and having seen it executed was so wonderful and mission definitive in the sense of wow. they they depro- they took certain things out of a book bag, and then added mm. and each book bag had a different set, and then they presented it to the judges without saying much except instructing them on, on what to take out. And then they they simulated a classroom setting right. where the student had to write something. Well, what happens to the student who didn't have the pencil? What happened? And each activity required something that the judges did not have in their backpack. Right. And then they did a great job of placing those judges in the in the in the mind and shoes of a child mm. facing this at one of the most peer pressure moments right. in their lives and the impact wow. that they had. It really it delivered at home, and it's a credit to them, to Don Donaldson and their facilitators. Oh. They're great. Yeah, yeah I, I, I can't, I'd be remiss if I didn't mention how important our facilitators were to to our group. So wow. So thank you uh, yeah. to Paco, Annette, Sarah, and uh, Jay. So that's so awesome. So we were there, of course, for pitch night Absolutely. to support you all, and um, we heard a little bit about what went on. But we were like, man, we want to be inside the room yeah. to hear what they're saying. So it was really fun to know that you guys did great. We did hear that you guys did great. So. Yeah, we, we well, we relied on you for for a lot of support of and, and information on how we can yeah. really you know make an impact on on our pitch. So we we appreciate your your feedback as yeah, well. Yeah, yeah. And I hope that the experience was uh, great for your entire team because Juan was sort of like your port, your point person for this entire thing. And, you know, he was amazing. He loved oh, yeah. from the very moment um, this project and what how you guys supported him as well because he was taking lead on the other end as far as the Be Strong side of things. Yeah, so. he, he was definitely instrumental to, to our success. So yeah. uh, we're, we're happy that we had Juan helping yes, us out. Yes, yes, yes. Awesome. One last thing about Project Pitch yeah, sure. Ostensibly the idea is money, seed money. But right. really what it I think it happens to do is ingrain the mission of the nonprofit mm. into key players in the group. So by the time they leave that night, they're really clear on the mission and the goal. And I think they've fallen in love a little more with the project. You know, uh, well, that's a good point. Uh, yeah. What I can tell you is every time I left Be Strong, I left pumped. I, <laughs> I, I wanted to knock down doors and I wanted to make a difference, right? But, you know, it, it's it, it's really eye-opening, right? Because, yeah. you know, you hear about it, but when you actually see it, it yeah. you know, it for me, it, it, really, it really touched home, you know? Uh, yeah. It's... Our community needs us, right? And uh, and you guys do such a great job of giving back to the community, not just to the kids, but to the families, yes. right? Um, you guys support South Day that needs all the help we can get, and mm-hmm. you know it's we're very very lucky to have have you guys uh, helping out our our children in South Day. No, this is an amazing program for us. I'm, I'm sure on behalf of the board of directors too, we all felt the love and the support that you guys gave. I mean, just the 
way in which, like William said, you ingrained yourself so much in the mission. It was clear about what you needed, what you wanted. The ask was very clear all around the fundraising events that you all put on and then sweating in the sun that day to pack <laughs> some of those bags. Right. It was 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 interesting, but it was it showed the grit that you guys had as well to make it to, to pull off a project in 100 days. 100 days. It goes by very fast. Right, right. right? You're when counting down. When you first get down. there, you're like 100. That's a long time. And then, right. And then it's before like, you know, it's you're not. at day 90 <laughs> and it's like, OK, time to, you know, really pick it up. But no, but it, it was great. Yeah. We, we were able to accomplish our goal and surpass it. And, you know, all the other teams as well. The, the great thing about the program is that, you know, everyone wins right and i know that's a little yeah. cliche but really it's the, it's the community that 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 wins yeah, right yeah but it's it's the truth right and yeah. uh cheers yeah. get booed when we say that <laughs> <laughs> because the professionals are so competitive oh, right yeah. type A's, i type felt A's. it i felt it in the room that night yeah. when they were releasing like the winners i was just like this is intense yeah, like yeah. it was very competitive and yeah uh, you know. but it makes it fun too it makes it Absolutely. fun Absolutely. And the reach that you all have in, in that sense, in that regard, is just amazing. It's absolutely amazing. And I know that there are many nonprofits that um, I think from that point on see projects, too, in a different light. Like we learned so much about how you all pitched it that we were like, man, we never thought about pitching it this way to corporate entities and mm -hmm. doing certain things to make people aware of you know, the importance of kids being prepared for school academically, right? We just, we're used to, this is what the need is, and you know, and that's it, and trying to rally the community around, but the way in which you, the poem that you guys found, yeah, okay. oh my God, like some cool, of those man. things, we were like, what is happening? Yeah. Like, this is amazing. Like it took our program to a whole nother level where now we don't want to go back. We, we're going to use that poem yeah. each year. We're going to make sure that people are aware of, of um, the need for kids to be fully prepared, it, it was just incredible. Yeah, and and I know for for our team, Maximize Miami, we we want to continue to to be a part of it, right? So it, yeah. it doesn't just end at the hundred days. It's like we want to continue and and be a part of your mission and and really you know help out uh, yeah. as much as we can. So well, we're not letting you go. We have all your emails, <laughs> right? Yeah. And so we'll be letting you know about upcoming events as well. Absolutely. Um, I know we're winding down on time. I did want to switch gears to our social yaks game, where the audience can get to know a little bit more about you. We may not get through all the levels. But if you want to, we can just start with picking the first question, um, breaking the ice for a team. You know, the audience is to get to know you a little bit more. So if you want to go first, Ozzy, you can. Sure. So pick that card there, read it to the audience, and then answer the question. Let's see. It says, uh, who do you admire most in the world and why? Um, it'd be my mom. Mm. Um, you know, my mom was a, a single mother uh, wow. with three kids and, you know, just her determination and her strong will and grit to, you know, teach us and, you know, really instill morals and values and mm. hard work, uh, you know, that for me uh, would never be forgotten. And it's definitely helped me. Uh, it's helped me in my you know, my career and also my personal life as a father, right? I want to mimic all the great things that she did. And, uh, you know, I'm, I'm very blessed to have a great mother. So Aww, my mom. That's beautiful. That's great. That's really great. Go ahead, William. You're up next. <laughs> <laughs> oh, okay. Uh, this is actually easy. When was the last time you laughed so hard that you cried? <laughs> um, I constantly do. Really? I, I, I listen. You don't look I think like the I, type. My uncle, God rest his soul. What? What? You don't look like the type. <laughs> See, yeah. so I do. I am maybe. I had an uncle who I think he uh, he loved me as his nephew because anything he said, I would die laughing. And I have a group of friends. Uh, my wife makes me laugh. My boys not so much often, but they do make me laugh. Um, and I have a group of friends who constantly crack me up. I have to put the phone down because I have to be productive. If not, they're making me laugh till I cry. What? I love to laugh. I love to laugh. And so, yeah, I constantly. Oh, that's constantly. great. Yeah. That is so beautiful. All right, we'll go to the next level here. We'll skip and we'll go to the get social. The yak is a very social animal. So let's pull. Yep, go ahead, Avi. Um, what family traditions are important to you? Uh, so for me, uh, you know, having dinner as a family is mm. very important to me. Uh, it's something that we did when I was younger, and uh, it's something that I, we still do today. Um, so 
definitely just having that time where you put down the phones and you focus on what's important and, you know, what's happening and, you know, just have that time to connect with your family. For me, uh, you know, having dinner together is is definitely the tradition that that's important to me. That's nice. That's nice. And we need to make time for that more these days, right? We're all busy. We're all in a rush. Calendar is on over kill right that's right trying to find ways to bond with family is really really important that sit down dinner yeah really nice go ahead william what would you say to your younger self get involved mm. it took me too long i was um oh wow in my mid-30s when i was voluntold to get into leadership miami oh. um up to then i floated i did what i had to do with school but never really participating even though i my first volunteer job was with my uh, high school at christopher columbus adelante mm -hmm. obligated to say that yep. uh, <laughs> <laughs> but really service was not something that spoke to me until i mm. went to leadership miami and i realized that this life was so much beyond you um, mm. And I started thinking of terms of legacy. And then through my church, uh, St. John Newman, my parish, mm -hmm. I became more involved. So, yeah, serve. Yeah. Uh, there's a saying, uh, uh, faith without action is death, death. right? Yeah. So yeah. Are you action, getting involved, yeah. that's key. That's beautiful. Yeah. And I think what you guys exude is that it can be done in the simplest way, right? It's just finding, understanding what the need is. And calling up maybe a nonprofit and saying, hey, I'm willing to support. How can I support? How can I volunteer? What can I do? You know, um, I think sometimes we make it like what you're saying, like it's it's scary. We're not aware of what the need is. Someone has to kind of say, hey, you know, this is an opportunity. But at the, end of, at the end of the day, I think it's important that if we all do a little part, how much stronger and more amazing mm -hmm. would our communities be? Yeah. Right. So really good stuff. All right, I'm going to have you pick one more from the Dig Deeper because we're running out of time. I'm a little nervous. But very but nice. Like uh oh. <laughs> uh, what do you look for in a partner or friend? Um, for me, I would say values and morals and loyalty. I mean, yeah. I, I guess the list is long, right? Yeah. But I mean, we'll, we'll stick with those, with those three, right? I, I think having great morals and great values is, is something that I look uh, to have. You know, I. I yeah. I, it, it's important, right? You yeah. you have to be uh, you have to be loyal. You have to have good values and good morals. So yeah, that would be it for me. That's true. And you're leaving a legacy for the people who are coming behind you too in 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 your workplace, mm -hmm. for your family, okay. right? And so that's important. That's really awesome. Okay, yeah. William. Looking back, was there a turning point in your life? Um, two very mm. quickly one involved my father after i pulled my last d in high school and he had me uh create a hole in the ground to dig a lemon tree in and said either get your grades or you'll be digging holes for the rest of your life the tree died two weeks later <laughs> uh, but really it was may 5th 2001 when i walked into my apartment and i found the, the room lit by candles and uh my wife was standing there and uh my girlfriend at the time and she said guess what and she'd let me know that we were having a boy we we're having a, a child we would find out a boy later and you know 24 years later 23 years married three sons um it was an absolute 180 that ended up being an incredible blessing wow and i'll throw in there the day that uh, Alfred Gonzalez came by my office and said, you're going into leadership, my hand. <laughs> <laughs> I heard that part about my last D, right? That digging a hole was very threatening, right? Life changing. Oh, yeah. Never. No more Ds. Honors. Right? Yeah. Honors from then uh, on. I graduated oh, Columbus with honors. So <laughs> on to you. That is amazing. Yes. Right. And it's so it's and I think I, what I love about your story is that it took a very creative way to show you what could happen. But the potential was there all along. Yeah. It was there all along. It just needed Better a push. little push. Thanks, a little Dad. push, right? <laughs> and I think that's what our community needs, right? The potential for our communities are there. It's always been there. Just need a little push, right? And it comes from people like you, like you, Ozzy, right? Who are there and willing to say, I'm willing to raise my hand and serve and be a part of something so that we can push and make sure that we're united, we're loving on one another, we're supporting one another, right?
Um, so with that said, we are going to close out our show. So thankful that you were able to be a part of it today. Thank, Thank you for having us. Know, William, if you want to say any last words about Leadership Miami, you can. So you for the professional side of it, I'll leave it to Ozzy. Ozzy's a perfect example. For to our, our, our nonprofit partners, to those that we have, or to those who are thinking of applying, please do. I know it can be intimidating, but really you're talking about partnering with 10 to 12 type A personalities who are willing to give not only their time, but find you the resources to help you build from a programming or capacity standpoint. Do not lose that opportunity. Uh, I know it can be intimidating. I've heard firsthand that the first thought is how, but we not only f how, find the why, but we find you the how. All right, so please apply. We can't do this without you, and we really want to make an impact. I love that. I love that. Ozzy, any words for those who might be shaking their boots and well, shaking in their boots and saying it's going to be normal for you to, to be a little bit nervous, but I definitely encourage everyone to 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 participate and 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 really give back to the community um, from from a leadership standpoint. You're going to grow. Uh, you're going to get some real great skills and uh, and you're going to give back to a great cause. And it's I can't tell you enough how great of a feeling that is. So if you're thinking about it, like Will said, don't hesitate, just do it, right? Get that little push like uh, yeah. like Will's dad gave him. So uh, definitely uh, something for everyone to, to give a shot. I love it. I love it. Well, this concludes our show. I'm so thankful again for you all um, saying and agreeing that you will be guests today. Um, Leadership Miami is an amazing program. You've heard so much today. Hopefully you are inspired to go out and serve your community in the best way you know how. We'll see you soon.